Welcome back to the Corporate Rejects Podcast, and welcome if this is your first time listening in. I am your show host, Amanda Davila, and I am excited to continue to provide support and empowerment through your journey to entrepreneurship. All right. Well, I am here with Elaine Jardin. Did I say that right? You did. Awesome. (laughs) Um, And I'm super excited to introduce her to you all because... I think she is just amazing. And when I first met her, I was like, oh my gosh, this lady is so cool. And I feel I feel weird saying lady because you're probably younger than I am, but <laughs> she's so cool. And I want to know you more and more and more. So I would love it if you would just give us an introduction to you, your business, your family, and just, yeah, like, who are you? And yeah, yeah give it all to us. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I'm so looking forward to it. Um, So like you said, I'm Elaine and my business is all about setting up and supporting Dubsado. So um, in case somebody's not familiar with it, Dubsado is a client relationship manager, which means it takes care of remembering all the little parts of your client relationship for you. Um, and let's see for my family, I have my husband, Eric, and I have two little boys. I have one that's going to be turning four here in a couple of weeks. And I also have a one-year-old. So it's loud around here, basically. (laughs) I can completely relate to that. And that's right. We both, we both have February babies that are about to turn four. I know. Crazy. I keep looking at them and I'm like, no, like it's not possible. How, how? Like, right. Not think of him as being like one. So <laughs> yes, I don't get totally. it. But, oh, it's crazy. Um, I will say like the last, there was some really hard times during three. Um, mm-hmm. The last few months have been like magic. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's like a normal thing. They start like coming around closer to four. How's yours like attitude wise? I agree. I think that the hardest point was probably three and a half. Like that was when we reached like peak. I don't even know how to describe it. Peak attitude, peak. I don't know. It was like everything came together, right? Because he had, he could express more clearly what he wanted and he was able to do more, but not able to do everything on his own. And so that just created this like perfect storm. But then probably once we got like into the last month or so, yeah, it has really been a shift. I'm like, Oh, you, I can tell you're growing up. You feel so different. (laughs) Yeah. It's been like, freaking like magic lately. I mean, obviously there's still little, like there's still moments. <laughs> yes. Um, I get burned out, but, um, yeah, just like overall, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, who are you? Like, mm-hmm. you're like the sweetest little thing ever. I just, ugh, I love it. It's so yeah. fun. Like experiencing all these like phases. I mean, there's definitely ones I enjoy more, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. like right now. And I'm sure that we will have lots of, uh, not so fun phases again, but yeah, I'm just really enjoying this. Like right now. And I've had a lot of friends that have kids that are older now and they keep saying like, Oh yeah, like three's the worst, but once you get to four and five, it's great, you know, but then of course the ones that are like, it all just sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I never expected honestly to enjoy having young children as much as I do. I kind of thought like, you know, I used to teach middle and high school. I like teenagers. I was like, Oh, you know, like I'll have these little kids, but then, you know, they're going to get older and that's when I'll really love them or not love them, but like enjoy them. Um, But I found even with my first, I was like, you know, as soon as he was a week old, I was like, I love one week olds. They're the best. And then, you know, he's like three months old. And I'm like, I love three months old. They're the best. And it's like every stage has something new. And that is, it's fascinating to me to like watch how they grow. It's fascinating. Not always easy, but just it's, it's so cool to get to see them develop into their own people. Absolutely. I can't agree more. It's, uh, it's the best. So that could have actually um, brought a couple of more questions for me. So yeah. you have your two little ones and you mentioned that you taught before. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit more about um, how you went from teaching to where you're at now. Sure. So um, I was still working in schools last spring. And when they said, we're going virtual, I was like, <laughs> you are, I am not literally no one on this planet wants me to teach math virtually. I don't, no one does. I don't want to either. Cause I think this is my side little soapbox, but, um, I think the way we learn math is by 
talking to people and experiencing things. And it's really hard to do that when you're virtual. So um, as soon as I kind of heard that was coming, I was like, well, I need to figure out something else to do. So I started listening to all of the podcasts about like how to start your own business and how to work from home. And I kept hearing ads for Dubsado and also people saying like, oh, it's really confusing. I was like, I bet I can figure it out. So I watched every webinar that they'd ever done in two weeks. And I was like, okay, I guess this is my business now. This is what I do. So I joke that it's kind of like an arranged marriage, right? Where I met Deb Sato and we were in a relationship together. We didn't necessarily love each other, but we had mutual respect. But now it's evolved into love. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is freaking cool. I had no idea that that is how you ended up with Deb Sato. Like, that's so cool too. It's like one of those things you're like, is this some sort of divine intervention? Like, like I keep hearing these Deb Sato. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. Like it is, you know, for a business owner who wants to focus on being the visionary in their business and growing their business, like they don't want, and they shouldn't be diving into Dubsado and like trying to figure out how to set it up. Um, you know, I have a history with Dubsado and most of it's love, but there was definitely a lot of moments of <laughs> frustration, um, mm-hmm. trying to get it set up. And I'm the same way where I'm like, well, I'm going to figure out how to do this. So I did, but it's not something I wanted to keep doing. Um, and I know a lot of business owners, like they just need it set up. So it works mm-hmm. and they can utilize the full package. And when you look at Dubs Auto, like the price for what you can like get if you actually use it, it's like incredible. Mm-hmm. Like it's such a good price. I, I can't even get over that. Um, and it works so well. I used it for you know a good couple of years and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So we'll dive in a little bit more about um Dubs Auto, but I just I love that. I love how you, you know, your real world career was changing and you're like, well, nope, I'm not doing that. Like, (laughs) let's figure out, like, that's like seriously the perfect definition of like what a corporate reject does, right? Like Mm -hmm. we're like, nope, not doing this anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and it's such a mindset shift, or at least it was for me to be able to be like, no, this isn't working for me. I'm going to do something else because, you know, when my, uh, first was born, I was like, I was still, you know, in the classroom doing all of that. And I was like, oh, I need to find another way to work in a school, but have more flexibility. Maybe I should be an administrator. Maybe I should be a school counselor. Like I wasn't even thinking outside of like working for a system, you know, a pretty rigid system. Honestly, I know people like to be like school, you know, you get your summers off and your weekends and it's like, yeah, but it's not, that's not quite, that's not quite everything that goes into that. Um, And so Then this time, you know, I had my second, I still went back to school. And then this spring, I was just like, no, this isn't what I'm envisioning for myself. And I'm just not going to do it. And that's okay. Like, it's okay for me to say this doesn't work for me. Absolutely. I love that. Like a lot of us really need that permission because Mm -hmm. we don't know that we don't really know, like, and believe that there are other options besides what's traditional, what we've been told we have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was thinking about, um, you know, how going from teaching and helping people in that way to where you're at now and how you're supporting clients. Um, And I I keep thinking of all these things you could do down the road. Like, you know, you could still teach, you could still be teaching people Mm -hmm. if you decide, you know, through teaching other people how to set up Dubsado. And you are when you're, you know, teaching your clients how to use it, like you set it up and you teach them how to use it. So you're still using those skills. Mm -hmm. You still feel like you get like that kind of satisfaction. Yeah. I mean, something that still blows my mind every time I talk with a client is like this, this person wants to be talking to me and wants to be learning what I'm telling them. Like the engagement, if you will, is so different than like with math, I always had to sell it, right? Like you got to sell this being valuable to you, this being exciting. Like you are a good math person, like all of that. Yeah. There's a lot of that. And so, yeah, they're selling in business, but it still just blows my mind every time a client is like, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'm like, what? Like, (laughs) wow. (laughs) But, um, that part is so rewarding. And I think honestly, the skill from teaching that transfers the most to Dubsado is taking something that is super complex and breaking it down so that it feels really simple and really manageable. And, you know, there's, could anybody out there learn to do what I'm doing? 100% yes. But I like to say that I'm the cheat code. I can just get you there faster. 
you can tell me your vision. I can break it down and give it back to you. And like, here's what we're going to do first, second, third. And it just feels easy. I love that. I keep, whenever you say the word math, I feel like I choke up and I'm like, yeah, PTSD. Yep. I have this automatic, like, no, like don't mention the word math. Um, I needed a teacher like you when I was in school because I had never had a good experience with math. Um, somehow I ended up in, you know, when I went into high school, I ended up in like, you know, the advanced math classes. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, <laughs> but like once I got to that point, it was like, nope, done, like mm-hmm. higher level stuff, no desire for this. And like, yeah. not even like, and maybe it was, maybe it was the teachers that I had weren't passionate about it. Like didn't think about it in the same way you do, you know, they were just that this is my job, like learn this, but I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, judge them in that way, but we've all experienced people like that, you know, that just don't mm-hmm. want to be doing it. And I think that's one of the things that um, attracted me to you is your energy around take, like you said, taking this complex thing and making it really simple. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've using Depsado myself and trying to get many clients set up on it. it had that same thing. Like I knew enough to like get them set up basically, but then when it came to like all of the awesome integrations, it's truly like take like their hands off it. Mm-hmm. That was just like a little much for me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love um, that there, you know, are people out there who do that full setup and it can take something. I think I told you about last time we talked, like I had, um, I have a friend who runs a really big business and she was paying a tech VA to set up Dubs Auto and it took like a good six months and she never even finished it. And she spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get this set up. And she was like, is like, this is insane. I'm not getting any benefit out of it. It's yeah. costing a lot of money. Um, and that's when I was like, oh my gosh, like, why didn't you like say something sooner? Like there are people who will do this and get it done quickly mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about it. it's done. Yes. You're so right. Well, and I think there's actually a lot of Dubsado guilt out there. That's kind of like math guilt, right? Like I talk to so many clients that are like, I have it, but you know, I still do this part of my process manually. And they're almost like afraid to admit that. And I'm like, that's okay. We all start somewhere, right? Like if you're starting out with Dubsado, just having it send your invoices, that's still better than what you were doing before you had Dubsado potentially, if you were still creating invoices manually, um, you know, and then we can add on a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And that's actually my, one of my favorite ways to work with clients is like, okay, so we got you the basics. Now, you know, your service so much better, you know, your clients so much better. We can really create this custom, unique, like unmistakably you Dubsado. That's not like anybody else's. Um, but that's so disappointing to hear it was taking so long and not getting any anywhere. Yeah. Well, I will say I talked to her yesterday and it's officially, everything is finally done. (laughs) And she feels, and you're right. When you said, um, you know, you learn more about your business and your people, like she, she did, she went through that. It just wasn't quite as like clean and concise as it would have been if she had known you. (laughs) Yeah, sure but she definitely went through that and her business is thriving because of it. So, um, I'm just, I'm a huge believer in using a system and I love Jobs Auto because I know the capabilities, but again, yes, it has to be set up correctly. Um, so I, you know, I recommend people check it out all the time because they're usually like piecemealing things together with all these different programs and things and it's driving them crazy and they're wasting so much time. Um, so when I found you, I was like, Oh my gosh, a person I can, I can recommend like, Yes. I can do it. And just like, um, going to your website, like makes my heart happy. Like, <laughs> so, like it's like, so like simple and like clear and hilarious. So um, <laughs> if you're listening to this, like go to Elaine's website, I'm going to link it because she is just like so cool and so funny. Um, so, um, I know the one part the go from scatter to streamline faster than you can, uh, lose a bobby pin uh-huh. I, I every time I think of it. Um, and then just like all those like funny, like these funny little things, like your sense of humor, like immediate hook. I was like, Oh my gosh, she's hilarious. So when, when a business owner ends up at your website, what can they find and accomplish there? So, um, 
If you're there, you should hopefully be able to see an outline of my full Dubsado setup package and what that looks like. Um, you can also learn a little bit about me. And I think it's a great opportunity to see if our personalities drive, because if I'm setting up your Dubsado, we're going to be spending a lot of time together. So <laughs> you want to make sure we get along there. There's also a place where you can contact me. Um, but I also need to update because honestly, my most popular service isn't even reflected on my site because it's just kind of grown organically. So um, I can do the full setups, of course, but my very favorite way to work with clients is in a Dubsado day. And so what that is, is three hours of working on whatever it is related to your Dubsado that you want. So if you have a new service that you're offering and you want help thinking through that process and getting it going, we can do that. If something's not working, because that happens, right, as we kind of build these like Frankenstein monster dubsados where it's like, okay, I'm just like throwing on this little piece and I'm throwing on this little piece and I'm throwing on this little piece. And then you can look up three months later and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on in there? We can untangle those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to see if we're, you know, just a good personality fit together to move forward in some kind of work way. Um, something else too that I have going on now that um, you should be able to see there is a free email challenge. It's at elainejardin.com slash challenge. And I will send you a Dubsado tip every day for five days. And these are not just the basic, like, here's how you do X, Y, Z thing in Dubsado. These are five things that I have found just in working with clients that most people aren't doing. And it's a really easy way to up-level your setup. Best part is you can implement all these tips, even if you're on the free plan for Dubsado. So there's no reason that you have to wait. Wow, that's amazing. I I will say when I um you know stopped working one on one with clients like in the way I used to, you know, where I would be invoicing them every month and that type of thing. Um, you know, I was I was like sad to be like, oh I guess I don't need to pay I don't need the paid version of Dubsado anymore, you know, because I'm not doing that, which was exciting for my business um changing. Yeah. But it was cool because I was just able to downgrade it, but everything's still there. Mm -hmm. so the other day someone asked me a question and I was like, Oh, I had this, this like proposal I sent out to this lady like a couple of years ago and I couldn't remember her name. Right. And I knew that in an email from her, she had sent me a document that I wanted to find. It was like a core, oh, it was a core value, um, exercise. Oh, nice. So I was like, I remembered, like I could picture her. I couldn't remember her name. Um, and I was like, I know it's in Dubsado. So I was, I had to go in there and I was able to like, look at everything I had archived, like from like, two and a half years ago, like I could see all this stuff. And I was like, that's really cool. Like I didn't lose access to everything. I just, you know, I'm on the free plan. So yeah. if I want to start using it again, I could, you know, have a couple of clients or whatever. Um, but I was like, it's all still there. And I found mm -hmm. the person I was thinking of so that I was able to search in my email and find that exercise I wanted. So it was just one of those things. I'm like, okay, that's like even cooler. It made mm -hmm. Dubsado even cooler. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, it's so nice, you know, let's say even just your business is going through some natural fluctuations and you're having to step away for a few months for whatever reason, you know, downgrade, don't have the expense, but your stuff is still there. And then when you're ready to pick it back up, Dubsado is ready for you. Yeah. I love that. And even, I know a lot of business owners who change their businesses all the time, you know, sure. for whatever reason, whether it's a positive thing or something horrible happened and they have to like pivot and do something different. Yeah. But, if your Dubsado system's already set up, like you don't have to go reinvent the wheel. Like that part's there. You just might have to change, you know, prices and the names of things, but everything's set up. So that's really cool. Like you invest like one time in getting it set up and you have it for life. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. So when, before I started my online business, I was a nurse. And um, when I started working online, I, you know, became a virtual assistant, then an online business manager. Um, and now I call myself an entrepreneur, a founder, a CEO. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really know what to call myself a lot of days because I do so many different things. So what do you call yourself? Well, shout out to Melissa Froelich because I can give her all the credit for this. I do call myself a CEO because um, I did a coaching program with her and she really pushed me into thinking about my role in my business. And I think it's so easy to be like, oh, I just complete these tasks, right? Like I just am setting up people's dubs autos, but it's so much more than that. Um, you know, like I'm making decisions. Um, I just have one team member right now. I just have my bookkeeper. I'm getting ready to hire a couple of VAs. Um, 
But, you know, my bookkeeper and I were talking about how one of my goals for my business is to create a donor advised fund out of my profits. That way I can, you know, give like Bill Gates one day Um, and being able to make decisions like that really make me feel more like a CEO and less like a taskmaster. (laughs) I love that. I I know a lot of people struggle in that same area. Like, 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 what do I call myself? Like, can I legitimately call myself that? Like, first of all, you can call yourself whatever you want. Like, sure. sure. <laughs> but to actually like embody it and believe it um, is a whole other thing. So mm-hmm. I love the way you explain that. Um, and that was going to be my next question was if you had a team. So um, I know so many business owners who, until they have a team, they don't feel like they're legit. Like, sure. well, it's just me, you know? Um, but they also don't step into that CEO role usually until they start really building that team and, that makes them feel more legit. So I love that. Um, so, well, and just one more quick thing about that. Yeah. Like, you know, there's the wisdom around hire before you're ready. So I, you know, um, outsourced to my bookkeeper before I really thought that I needed one. And I know this is going to sound really woo, but, um, I hired my bookkeeper. And then the next month after that, was the first time that I made more in one day working in my business than I made in a month of teaching. And then later on that month was my first 10 K month. And I'm like, okay, like there is something going on here about me taking like all these, I've had all these worries about my business finances, right. On going. So I'm like, am I doing this right? I don't know, but I can't afford to pay somebody, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, no, this is worth it. And like, it's paid back in spades. So now I'm like, okay, VA, where are you? Like, I need you. Let's hit this next level. <laughs> Cause Absolutely. it freed up more time for me to think about like my overall strategy and where I want my business to go. And it's just awesome to see how just that one little change can make a huge difference. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that's like the whole thing I teach in my course outsource like a boss, like Mm -hmm. for business owners is like, I know it feels really scary and you don't feel like you can afford to outsource, but you can't afford not to outsource. Like if you want to grow your business and not lose your mind and not be working 50, 80 hours a week, like you have to outsource. And there's a lot of fear around that, which is why I create Outsource Like a Boss and my CEO Mastermind is to help support, you know, women in business as they go through these transitions and help them through it. So like nobody has to do it alone and you shouldn't because if you are, you know, if you are doing the work of a virtual assistant, then you're the assistant in your business. So how can you be the CEO and the assistant, Oh my right? gosh. Yes. You're so right. Cause I don't think very many of us would go around saying like, Oh yeah, I'm the VA in my business. Even though right now I am straight up the VA in my business. Like, right. yes. <laughs> right. And I think it's funny too, like for some reason, and I don't know if it's like a female thing or if it's just because, you know, I run an online business, but being an online business owner, so many of us think that we have to do it all our, on our own, but if we open a brick and mortar store, restaurant, salon, like whatever, like we would never do it all on our own. Like it's like normal, like, you know, you hire employees, right? Mm -hmm. So like, why do we have such a hard time in the online business space? Is it because we don't really think we're a real business? Do we not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I I think part of it, (laughs) no, you're so right. Cause I think part of it for me, like when you brought up the restaurant, I'm like, obviously I would not be like the front of the house and like seating guests and serving them and cooking the food. That sounds insane. Um, but I think at least in my mind, sometimes those like brick and mortar skills, I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that. So like, I don't know how to, I'm not a, I'm not a chef. My husband is, I am not. So like, there's no way I would do that. But I feel like in the online space, so many of us are like, oh, well, I could watch just like I did with Dubsado. I can watch like a tutorial on YouTube. I can figure it out. And it's like, we can be like smart and capable without having to figure out everything. (laughs) That is a really good point. I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, you're right. Like it's so, which is one of the things that's so beautiful about the online business world is we do have so many options and we can literally be anything we want because you can find a tutorial, a webinar, you know, someone to teach you, you can find that so easy to tip your fingers. Yeah. Right. Like, Oh, well, I can do this, but should you? No, probably not. You shouldn't be doing it all. (laughs) You know? But that's, I think we get stuck. Like, well, I can do this. So why would I pay someone else to do it? Mm -hmm. Well, because you're going to like go into like (laughs) a stress and do frenzy. And I know I found myself several times in my online business career where I'm like, oh my gosh, like I am working nonstop, like 
who is my family? Where are they? They're around here somewhere. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but everything else just like gets shoved under the rug because I'm working so hard, which is great in the sense that I'm passionate and I want it so bad, but it's not healthy. So definitely something that's really important is to start outsourcing. Well, yeah. Um, And one of my bad, bad, bad habits, that's like a hangover from teaching is feeling like I always need to be working. And feeling like, you know, okay, like, yes, the work day is done, but now there's so many more things I need to be doing, like lesson planning or grading. I was doing the same thing with my business, which is not, that's not ultimately where I want to be. So I work with an energy coach and a sales coach. Um, I'm getting certified in Reiki. So like you had mentioned, like not to get too woo, like I get super woo. So, (laughs) um, you know, some things that are really important to me are um, meditating and exercising. Like those are things I have to do to keep my sanity. Mm -hmm. Um, There's lots of other things I enjoy too, like chocolate, you know? (laughs) Right. But um, as a business owner, like what do you do to keep your sanity? I delete my apps every day when I'm finished working. So I take my email off my phone. I take all social off as soon as my workday is done. Um, because I have to save myself from myself. If I have those things, then you'll find me like commenting in Facebook groups, you know, at like midnight, no one needs to hear what I have to say about Dodsado at midnight. Like they can wait until the morning. Um, so I found that by doing that, um, and having a hard stop for myself, it's really helpful because I get some serious FOMO. So I'm just like, this is just gone. My computer's closed. My apps are gone. Like I'm just not working anymore. And now I can shift into doing, you know, whatever it is that I feel like doing. That is amazing. I actually just heard about someone doing that like within the last couple of weeks. And I was like, I never thought about deleting my apps. I, like, that's kind of yeah. brilliant. Like I, last year at some point I was like, okay, something has to give because all the notifications and everything. So I shut down every single notification on my phone, except for text and, and calls. But even, you know, during certain, you know, night hours, um, you know, everything, even texts and calls are shut down unless you're on my favorites list. Like, so, if, you know, if like my mom or my mother-in-law sure. calls for emergency, you know, which I love that that's, a, you know, a possibility mm-hmm. um, that I can do that. Um, and so for me, that was a, that was a big change, but you're right. Like I could totally still go on and check things. I could, you know, so I love that idea. So it's been in my head now that I've heard it from multiple people and also from successful people, <laughs> like, you know, like not just like any, like somewhere in a person telling me, but like you and like another um, client I have, you know, who is in the place where she's making millions of dollars every year. Right. So I'm like, okay, like high rollers, like legit business people who have been in my shoes are doing this. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that needs to be something I do because I definitely fell into the trap of laying in bed at night and just posting so much BS and (laughs) wasting so much time and energy on things that really aren't important. So, yeah, well, and to that end, I also don't add them back on until like an hour into my workday because otherwise I'll just be scrolling Instagram, right? Let me see what's up. And it's like, that's not the most, like engaging on social is an important part of my business, but it's not the most important thing. And so that's, I just don't start that way. Um, so it's, it, yeah, it's really helpful. (laughs) Definitely a great like way to put up those boundaries. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you have to go into the app store and like re-download a whole app, like, are you going to do that when you're laying in bed? Like, (laughs) like I might at some point, depending on like my mental stability of that night or something, (laughs) how emotional I am or what I feel like I need. But I love, I absolutely love that. And that's something that I'm going like, now that I've heard you say it too, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I will, because that's super, that's super, super exciting. Like to have that boundary. I know I need it. Like, just like I need the accountability of having a coach, like mm-hmm. for my business. Like I need that accountability as much as yeah. I used to not want to have to admit that I do. Like I need yes. it to keep me focused and on track. So, um, having, you know, my different types of coaches and having those boundaries, super important. So, um, what do you do to support your professional development? So I still lovingly attend every webinar Donsato ever puts out. Um, but I also work with coaches. I think that it's so helpful for me to have somebody who's, you know, 
one step or 25 steps ahead of me. Um, because I also find that they attract other business owners that I want to be like, you know, if you had told me that I could make what I made teaching in a day, even six months ago, I've been like, there's no possible way, you know, and then I hear of women, you know, that are like, well, today I made $20,000. I'm like, okay. I had never even, it never even occurred to me to think about that as a possibility. So I think spending time with other business owners is so important. Um, something else, I don't know if you can share this link or, you know, people can absolutely reach out to me for it, but coffee chats, which is how we connected is like some of my favorite things for professional development, because just those little offhand comments that come up when you're talking with people, like some of those are real gems that have made a huge difference in my business. You know, just hearing people talk about how they handle, you know, working online and being a CEO all comes from there. Absolutely. Yes. I, I struggle with coffee chats a lot because of my own anxiety. Mm -hmm. So like, I know they're beneficial and I always learn a ton. So I 100% agree that they're super important. So then, you know, when I, I'm having a weekday and I'm not feeling like, Oh, like my confident CEO self, then I'll be like, Oh my God, I have to get on the phone call with somebody. Sure. Like, you know, I have those moments. Um, but what I've definitely found is by working with several different coaches and business owners, like you said, who are, you know, a lot of times 25 steps ahead of us. Um, you know, I hang out with the people who are making millions because that's where I'm headed. Right. Right. And I've right. learned so much from them. Um, and it's a nice reminder that like, like, yes, like I call them like high rollers, you know, <laughs> like it's an easy way yeah. to like, classify them. Like, yes, they've done some really cool things and make a lot of money, but they're just like you and me. Mm-hmm. They're still like humans, like, right. right. Like, they still have the same feelings. They have the same fears. But my sales coach who makes millions of dollars and has made like so many millions of dollars for companies over the years, like, when she told me that she still gets anxious about like going live, I was like, really? Like, no way. Like you are like blowing smoke up my skirt. Like you are so confident and like everything you do is perfect. And she just laughs. She's like, I have a whole routine to get ready to put myself out there like that. I'm like, Oh, so you are human. Like you actually, like you're human. Like you're a mom, you're a wife. Like you're just like me, you know, you enjoy dirty jokes and, you know, dry Mm -hmm. humor just like I do. Um, You just happen to have figured out a way to make millions of dollars. And okay. Like, okay. Like this is like legit. So I love, yeah, I love that. Um, uh, that's amazing. Okay. So I had one other question about, um, reading because I love to read. Um, and most of the people who I talk to who are very successful in business are big readers, whether they naturally just already loved reading or they've made themselves love it. Like it's something that's like, is they have to do. So right now I'm reading, um, a Brene Brown book called, um, I thought it was just me. Mm-hmm. And I've really been into a lot of her stuff lately, um, in my personal development and professional. Um, so I'm just curious, like, like that's made me like learn how to open up and be more vulnerable and courageous. And like my word for the year for this year is courage. Oh, I like that. Um, yeah, it's something that like having that, like, like it's, it seems silly sometimes like, Oh, it's just like a word, like in my back pocket. But like in those moments where I am feeling weak, I pull that word out and I'm like, I am courageous. Like I got this. Um, so are there, um, certain books that you are reading or that you can be like, Oh my gosh, this was like a total game changer for me. Yes. Okay. So two, so one of the ones that was the biggest game changer in my business is the pumpkin plan. And the pumpkin plan is all about like how to grow your prize winning pumpkin in your business. If you'll go with the analogy, um, you know, so oh, it's so good. And it walks you through step-by-step step what to do. And it gave me a lot of clarity around like the services that I want to be offering and what I want to be doing as a business owner and, you know, how I can nurture what it is that I love to do in my business and just continue focusing on growing that and serving my clients in an even better way, rather than chasing all these little offshoots and the shiny objects and all of that. So definitely 10 out of 10 recommend the pumpkin plan. Just yesterday, I finished the book, get rich, lucky bitch. Also totally recommend it. Have you read that one? Yes. Um, That was a big game changer for me. 
Oh my gosh. Well, I just didn't even realize, you know, as I'm like digging back into just like my history with money and my memories around money, like so many different things have come up that I had totally forgotten about. And so it's really been fun, honestly, to implement her stuff, but those two for sure. I hadn't heard of the pumpkin plan. So I'm going to have to look into that one. Um, I keep, I keep getting like, like pulled back to like what you said in the beginning of like about how you decided to look for something different last spring. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're in January now. So like you haven't even been in business like for a year and like you're already like you've done 10 K months. Like that just like, because I am like really good at chasing shiny objects. So I've like, like had, I've had 10 K months and then I've had, you know, two K months. Like I've had months of, you know, like really, been drastically one way or the other because of my focus. So like just hearing you talk about that, like how you like figured out like what you're going to do and you went for it and you are doing the, you know, you get the coaching, you're reading the books, like in less than a year, like, I hope you realize like how incredible, like your journey has been already. Like it's amazing. (laughs) It's so inspiring. And I think for, you know, the women who are going to listen to this, whether they aren't in business yet, Um, they're just thinking of, you know, like they want to leave the corporate world. They want to leave whatever, you know, traditional job they're doing or the ones who are already running businesses and they're just trying to like find their way. Like hearing that story is like, is just, is going to be transformational. I know it. So props to you. I just want you to know. Like, (laughs) thank you. Thank you. There, you know, there are definitely times when it's like, oh man, like I'm not growing fast enough or like, oh man, I didn't hit this milestone that somebody else is doing. So that I appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. We all have those things, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is, is you have, you have those goals and those desires and you strive for them. We don't always meet the mark. Like there's always going to be off months. Like that's normal in business. Um, but you keep moving forward and growing and growing and honing in deeper on your business and your message and where you're going. I, I love it. So just one last question. Sure. So, um, you know, last year I moved my family from Oregon to Hawaii um, and made a lot of really big bu- business pivots. And a lot of that was kind of forced upon me because of effects of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it's been very transitional. So, you know, I help women learn how to work online and I support women who work online already as they make those transitions in their business so they can scale and get to those 10K, 20K plus months without working a million hours. So are you planning any big moves in your business that you would be willing to share? So I don't know that I'm going to make any huge moves in this business, but I'm going to be starting a little passion project on the side. Can I talk about that? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this goes back to what we were talking about um, earlier with math. So I think that as parents, we get so much or anybody who cares about kids, really, not even just parents, we get so much information about how to help our kids become readers. You know, we know that we're supposed to talk to our kids. We know we're supposed to read to them. We know we're supposed to sing and, you know, point out everyday objects. But there really isn't a lot of support out there for caregivers around how to build a strong math foundation for their kids. And I think a lot of us that are adults don't feel like we're actually math people for whatever reason. Like you said, there's a lot of PTSD around (laughs) math out there. So um, what I'm hoping to do is develop a membership for caregivers about how to build math through activities, not like worksheets, not through formal counting, but what are like playful activities that you can do with your kids to help lay that foundation so that they go into school feeling like math people, you know, they already have the foundation in place. So that's something that I'm really excited to get going on and get it launched in 2021. Cause I think a lot of us need it myself included um, <laughs> to help build those skills for our kids. That's amazing. Um, and something, yeah, like this is the perfect place to talk about this too, because there are so many moms, work at home moms, Mm -hmm. future work at home moms here who are trying to balance, you know, potentially, you know, I don't know what they're calling it. If they're, it's not like if you're doing school at home, it's not traditional homeschooling. It's doing school at home and run, you know, their businesses and, you know, make dinner, clean the house, you know, all the things that are overwhelming. So the thought of having to teach like certain subjects like math and, Mm -hmm. you know, science for a lot of people that there's a lot of subjects that are like, and like, 
when we made the move to Hawaii, a big part of that was setting up the lifestyle that we wanted and to be surrounded by other people who are doing that. So for me, like I, you know, once my kid is to like the age, you know, where he's ready for like more traditional school, my, my goal is to homeschool slash like wild school, like, like really cool. to learn, you know, cause we're in like the best place to do that. And mm-hmm. I have a friend over on the big Island who is doing that with her three girls. And it's incredible. Like they go out on these like grand adventures all over the Island and they learn so much. So, so like how you said that about, you know, the math, like learning how to do that in a way that supports, you know, actual like people doing it, not like being a math teacher, mm-hmm. um, because I have a lot of anxiety and that's the one thing, you know, about like, in myself, like that confidence, like I have, you know, I'm excited and feel confident, like teaching my child, except for the math part. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, it's not my, my thing. Sure. Well, and like, I know this is not a math education podcast, but like, I feel very, very deeply that everyone is born a math person, everybody, but we're just taught along the way that like, Oh, it's not for us. Maybe it's because we're girls or maybe because you know, we had a concept we didn't understand and we got put in a lower math group or, you know, because we're not catching on at the pace that people are going. And it's like, that's not, if you are a person, you are a math person. And that's, you know, I just want kids and caregivers to feel empowered by that. I love that. I was just um, interviewing a bookkeeper earlier this week and I was, you know, I had my guard up about the whole like math and like money side mm-hmm. of it. Because I was like, Ugh, you know, it's a, it's a struggle for me. And she was just kind of like laughing. She was like, she was like, the thing I love about math, you know, about bookkeeping and doing math is like, there's always a solution. Like it's, it's like, like four plus four, four equals eight. Like there's always going to be a solution. So even mm-hmm. when it gets like deeper, I'm probably not explaining this good, but no, that makes sense. Like, I think it's like deeper and like more complicated. There's still an answer. Like there's no like, well, you know, like anything else we're dealing with in the world, like our beliefs and thoughts on things, you know, whether it's related to family or politics or whatever, religion, any of those things, like there's all these like different ideas. Well, it could be this, it could be that. We don't really know, you know, with math, like it's very like black and white, like four plus four equals eight, right? Mm-hmm. At least we're going to, we're going to, you might be like, actually. <laughs> no, but I understand like taking the comfort in that. Right. And also that's, like, that's where I see this math project kind of going is about like math is just describing patterns in our world at, at the base. Like that's all it is. It's talking about patterns. So like, yeah, you have a group of four and you have another group of four. That's going to give you a group of eight. That's consistent. We can, we can rely on that. Um, so that like, totally makes sense to me. We can rely on that. I like that. Like, yeah, I love that. Ugh. Well, this has been amazing. And like, oh gosh, I can just talk to you forever. I know. <laughs> I feel the exact same way. I, um, I'm really excited to hear about how all of that goes. And please keep me in the loop. And I will. Um, I know that I'm going to need that. <laughs> teaching sure. my child. <laughs> um, and maybe teaching myself too. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. This has been amazing. So thank you so much for coming on and answering all of the questions and sharing about your business and your life. This has been incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening in. I am trying to reach as many moms as I can to help support and empower them in their journey. So if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would leave a five-star review on my Apple podcast page. I know as busy women, entrepreneurs, and moms, our time is extremely limited and valuable. So to sweeten the deal, I am buying the next 10 five-star reviewers their next beverage at Starbucks. Instructions are in the show notes, and I am so grateful for you. I love supporting moms, and I love moms supporting moms. See you next time.